<clears throat> right, hi, my name's Jazza, you probably know that because this is my channel. Uh, I don't usually sit down with other people and do like a YouTube vloggy vlog. Made an exception. Made an exception for the lovely Rowan, who I've known for a very long time, but we've never made anything together. <laughs> sure. YouTube best practices dictate that we should really wait until at least halfway through the video to announce what our super secret amazing announcement is, but bugger it. Basically, we've started a new podcast called The Queer Movie Podcast. Yay. It is, surprise, surprise, a podcast about... A qu queer movies? <laughs> Queer movie? Oh, oh. A question mark? A queer movie? <laughs> the podcast is going to be monthly and we are going to review a new queer film from a different genre of cinema each month. Right now, we have three episodes up that are going to be like, uh, oh, just to wet your, your anticipating palettes, which is very, very exciting. We reviewed uh, three movies already for you uh, and then we kick off, but try and find Queer Movie Podcast uh, on Google or on any of the podcatchers that you use. Very good. Now... I'm not going to lie to you, I feel like if you try and search it on Google it won't come up with us as the first No, 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 it, it will, because it, I'm going to work on the SEO. <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. The problem is YouTube rules dictate that you can't just make a video um, announcing something. So uh, we're also going we're to play a little game that is also played on Rowan's channel. Mm. I guess you go over there at some point. I don't know how game this works. Game is a strong word. For it's what's a about game. To <laughs> so we each have. Are uh, we gamers? <laughs> with a Y. Is this Twitch? <laughs> it is. Hello, Twitch. <laughs> oh, no. Each of us are going to present a LGBT movie that we love, that we adore, that has changed us in some way, shape mm -hmm. or form. We have to present it within 30 seconds and convince the other person to go and see it, I guess. Uh, and and you... hopefully convince you as well. And hopefully convince you as well. That's the call to action. That's what you're, you're going to comment about films. it. Watch <laughs> some films. Your homework is watch some films. So uh, do you want to kick this off, bro? Yes. Right, Rowan, you're going to break down your first movie yes. in 30 seconds. Yeah. Starting from now. Okay, the movie is called Princess Sid, available on Netflix. Um, it's, <laughs> Not a spot. It's about a um, girl who goes to stay with her aunt for the summer, and she learns a lot of stuff along the way, but it's not that typical, um, oh, am I gay? What's the exploration? Like, very quickly, she's like, oh, I guess I'm bisexual. Like, cool. And it's just a very sweet, nice romance that involves coming out, but not in a really super dramatic stressful way. Five seconds. Um, and also her aunt might be asexu asexual, um, so that's also cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow, phenomenal. <laughs> um, I, why haven't I heard of this before? Is I it new? I don't know. Um, probably been like nine months to a year on Netflix. Oh, brilliant. Well, I've clearly not been swimming around in the LGBT section of Netflix. It's a really good time, um, honestly. And, it's, and although... Um, there's like very frank discussions of sexuality and of sex. The, there's also these little nuggets of mentions of things. So like there's a bit where um, the protagonist about someone that she likes who's um, kind of presenting as a girl but very masculine. Mm -hmm. um, and they have a little conversation about like not assuming people's pronouns with her aunt, but like her aunt's the one that's like, is she like, she could be, she could like, use male pronouns like mm -hmm. and it's, it's just like a really interesting little tidbit that felt like it was an in conversation within the lgbt community rather than being, oh we love that shit rather than being like a straight people are making this film and it's very obviously lots of stuff that you think from the outside of the community mm -hmm. um so yeah and also it was just i felt like a very strong affinity with the aunt character who was a very just like a scholar kind of academic person um there's also a load of like religious imagery that goes through mm. that as someone who's like non-religious also was like super interesting to see in like a kind of queer narrative in a Great. way that wasn't So you're like, now at 90 seconds. Oh no, it's so bad to be <laughs> queer and religion. Uh, um, I'm sold. I'll watch it. There we go. And it's it, a good time. Yeah, excellent. Netflix, go, good. Right, you do me now. Don't mind if I do. Right, are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, three, two, one. Sell me. The weekend came out in 2011 and is about uh, two gay guys, I believe in the north of England, just kind of like hooking up and meeting up and hanging out, smoking some weed, having some sex, having a great time. And it's not a film that's necessarily about um, uh, kind of like being gay, but it's about these two guys that kind of 
um, awkwardly fall in love with one another, but are also integrated into their respective communities um, uh, and their families and stuff like that. And it was really heartwarming and lovely, and I liked to watch it. It was good. There you go. So this is one that I've heard a lot about because I feel like in the British like LGBT scene, it was very like celebrated, oh, especially when it brilliant. came out. It was very well received. It was the God's own country got, of its time. Yeah, I just never got around. Mm. Oh, God's own country. I didn't put that on the. We didn't put it on the. We thing. didn't put it on Honorable this. mention. Honorable mention God's to God's own, own country. country is a real good film. I have just never gotten around to seeing it, and and not through actually like thinking it's gonna be bad at all i think it's just had such good praise for it yeah I, I and mean, your recommendation obviously is what is tipped over the edge clearly <laughs> um but also it kind of resonated with me because i think i have a tendency to um uh, meet somebody and then fall in love with them over the weekend um and i how are you enjoying this weekend at my house <laughs> chatter <laughs> hi Rowan. hi yeah are we straight um, dating people we right are now? straight dating <laughs> you have a lot of those kinds of uh, narratives for straight people. Mm. There's lots of options that exist, and I'd never seen it with a gay movie before or an LGBT movie before, and I really awesome. appreciated it because it was like, oh, it's a bit of my story. Nice. It was nice. Your turn. My turn. Right. Okay. Uno, due, tre. A Love to Hide is a French film um, set in Nazi occupied France. Ooh. It is light. a. <laughs> not a light film at all. Um, it's about two uh, gay men who are kind of inadvertently discovered because of the actions of someone who's close to them, um, but they were also um, harbouring a Jewish girl who was a childhood friend of one of them, and the whole thing is just this like family drama that's played out with incredibly awful consequences. Nice. I So I first watched this, um, we did a movie night when I was like a teen when we were teenagers. This does not sound like the type many. of movie well, that no, you want to so watch. We did at like a movie. A movie I say movie night. It was like movie day and night, oh, okay, in that okay. we basically just rented a load of gay movies mm -hmm. of loads of different kinds and genres and stuff. And this was the one that stuck out of all of them that were all like you know pretty passable. Um, this was just so incredible. Like we we finished it and we just like sat in silence through the whole credits because we were all just like fucking hell. Like oh my, oh my god. god. Um, just beautifully acted, beautifully shot, um, and but like no one's heard of it. I think in part because it's not. I haven't. Kind of a, I haven't it's like not an English language film. It. So yeah, I can can highly highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. We should do something like that with the podcast. Have like a day night. Yes. Out of thing. Ooh. If we're successful. Yes. Then that would please support. Please us. make us <laughs> successful. Right, my last one. You ready? I am ready. Three. Two, one, go. This one's easy. Three words. Paris is burning. Yes! There <laughs> we go. Don't the know, end. If you don't know, Paris is burning is basically a uh, documentary about the ballroom scene of uh, drag performers in New York in the 80s, um, uh, just before kind of like the real peak of the age crisis. What is a tragedy is that most of the cast um, uh, are now dead, but it is the root of a lot of our vernacular, of how we talk, um, uh, of a lot of our culture. If you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, Paris is Burning is necessary viewing. Um, you have to watch it if you haven't. You have to. And it is on Netflix now. It used to be on YouTube because nobody cared about the rights, but then we found it. Ha <laughs> ha! Um, yeah, again, this is this is the difficulty with having two people who are hosting a queer movie podcast. We've watched quite we'll a lot. Try and of... recommend you that that we've seen a lot of queer <laughs> movies. Um, but yeah, Paris is Burning is an incredible, incredible film. Mm -hmm. um, by a female filmmaker as well. Um, oh, I had no idea. Yeah, um, and has just spans like generations of this ballroom scene. Mm -hmm. Has every kind of humanity in it. In and I think like... because it's such a brilliant movie, what, such a brilliant documentary, um, it has managed to safeguard uh, kind of like that history that would have otherwise been lost because Completely. of the age. And there's so much history that we have lost, so many stories mm -hmm. of individuals that we have lost because of the AIDS crisis in the 80s and the 90s. Um, and this is kind of like a bit of a time capsule of that, um, of what it was like to live at that time. Uh, and make sure that certain um, uh, experiences, like especially trans people of colour experiences, yeah. aren't erased. Uh, I I'm love gonna... it. It makes me cry every time I watch it. This is the last one, right? Right. Of all of them. You're it. Oh. Yeah, last okay, one. Ready? Ready? Three, 
two, one. Uh, Moonlight. Oh. Um, it won Best Picture, guys. <laughs> it, <laughs> it did actually win Best Picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Moonlight is incredible. It's basically the story of a boy told through three acts at three different ages um, of his life as it cycles around poverty and sexuality and drugs and crime and identity. Mm -hmm. And it is the, one of the most beautifully shot, incredible things from quite like basically like new director and writer in terms of like something that the, 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 the oh so uh, go on the, okay listen <laughs> the script was written as a like a um a film school project um it was like almost the first feature that was made by the director like it was just it's, yeah, it's how yeah, yeah. this was made by people who weren't incredibly seasoned is wild to me um it's 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 so good it's so it's brilliant. So good. And actually, we cover this on the second episode of the Queer Movie Podcast, um, which you should go and listen to. What a segue. I know, I'm brilliant at this. Uh, Rowan, thank you so much. Are we doing this again? Okay. <laughs> Rowan, thank you. This is not a normal Engaged. thing to do, but <laughs> we are now hand fasting. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming on and, and really thank looking you. forward to partaking in this podcast adventure for you. Thanks for having me. What I need from you, if you're into kind of like the queer stuff that I make on here on YouTube, then please check out the podcast. Genuinely, it is, uh, I'm really proud of what we've done so yeah. far and I think it's one of the creatively the coolest things um, uh, that uh, I've ever been in, involved in. So I would love it if you would be able to go and listen to it. Um, uh, if you could leave a review, even if it's just a few words, leave some stars in whatever app you use. Um, please because that is so important for new podcasts mm -hmm. it's vital so, so that we end up getting um listened to that we end up on rankings and all of that kind of stuff i really want this to be a success mm -hmm. um and also finally if you really really like us and if blue is your color as well <laughs> um the then, warmest color <laughs> yeah yeah then uh, <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> then uh, check out our Patreon and please support us because at the moment we pay money to host this podcast. Uh, we have to pay for the um, hosting fees. We have to pay for uh, equipment. the equipment, um, our time. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of time to film, uh, to, to record and to edit podcasts as well. Um, we'd really appreciate it if you think our work is worth a uh, mm -hmm. dollar or five or ten um, if you went over to Patreon and supported us per episode. Um, uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe to Rowan here. Hi. Subscribe to me here. here. And um, watch Rowan <laughs> the video we did on Rowan's channel here. Oh, cool. Someone's putting in some cards. Yeah, this I know. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Otherwise, it's going to be nothing. It's going to be awkward. <laughs> yeah. Right there, you go. Sweet. Banging. <laughs>